So what we'll be doing today is learning how to find an item on Thingiverse, evaluate whether or not it's going to be a good item to print, downloading the item, importing it into Prusa Slicer, our slicing software, and then finally taking and submitting the final sliced file into my form so you can print it. The first thing we want to do is talk about a little bit the process. Uh, Thingiverse is a great website uh, where users can upload any file they want. That means that you get all the available items from anywhere in the world. It also means you get not very well built items from anywhere in the world. So you want to make sure you're really looking at the items you want to print and making sure they make sense for printing. We'll go over that as we start uh, looking for items. We'll then be taking and using Prusa Slicer, which is a software that's going to take that 3D model and sort of like a deli slicer, cut it from the bottom all the way up to generate the instructions for the printer to follow to draw each layer into the model and build an actual piece of plastic. Finally, to submit for prints for me, I use a form on my website, and I'll walk you through filling out that form and submit my print to be printed. You'll be following these pro steps on your own to actually make get something printed. We'll be doing this a lot, so make sure you pay attention here because we're going to do this constantly. So let's start off with Thingiverse. You can see here at Thingiverse.com, and let's search for something. I'm thinking maybe I want to download a dinosaur keychain. So, hey, it's all found it. You're going to see once it finds, there's going to be a couple different options. Searching now. So things I'm looking for are prints that feature a printed model and things that don't have severe overhangs. Let's start with this guy right here. This guy looks kind of neat. So I'm going to click on him. He's really a neat dinosaur, except we have a problem. This chin right here is very, very shallow overhang. It's basically sticking out over nothing. The problem with that is it's going to need supports to print. You can see here actually with prints with a support. Uh, the issue with this is that it's not really optimized for 3D printing. It will talk about supports later, but for this model, I really want you to find something that's really optimized for printing. So let's go look at something else. This guy down here, he's kind of neat. It's nice and flat, sort of pixelated, looks neat. The only problem I have is there is no 3D printed model here. So I see just pictures from like Tinkercad or something like that. The issue is I don't know if the model is actually complete or if it's actually like fully sealed or whatever. And that's okay for later, but right now I want to make sure we get a print that's going to work really well on the first try. So I really want something that has a picture of the actual model and it's not going to require overhang over require supports. So let's look at this guy. I like this guy. He's very neat. First thing I notice is there is a picture of the actual printed model. You can see that in the thumbnail. I can see different views. Looks like he did print it in multiple colors. We'll talk about that coming up soon. And it's flexible, which just looks cool. Now, there are going to be some overhangs for the flexible sections, but because of how they've designed their uh, parts, the overhanging part isn't over nothing. It crosses over a gap. It's called a bridge. And our printer is actually pretty good at printing bridges. So this would be a perfect model for us to do. So I'm going to go to Thing Files. And you have a couple options here. The first option is agree and download or download all files. I don't like this button or this button. They're going to download a zip file as an extra step. I really just download the file I need, which is an STL file, which is the standard type of file that Prusa uses, uh, Prusa Slicer uses to read in to make uh, instructions for the printer. So I'm going to click on that and download it. I'm now going to go over and switch to my slicer. Here is Prusa Slicer. It's a fairly powerful tool with lots of options. So we want to be a little careful about this. We're going to kind of use the basic settings right now, and we'll move up to it. The first thing I want to do is make sure we're in the right mode. We have different options. We have MK3S, MK3S, MMU2S, and MMU2S single. If we do 2S, you're going to see a rectangle here. This is a uh, what's called a purge block. And that's going to get to it when we use multiple colors printing. But for this project, I want to keep a simple one color print. So let's switch our printer to the, the single. I believe that it's just MK3 SLR2, but let's use single to make sure everything's good. So now we need to actually put something on the build plate. So we're going to hit the little model plus button up here. What that's going to do is it's going to open up a file dialog. I'm going to click on the file download today, hit open. It's going to load the file and lay it out. You're going to see here it's going to start figuring out how long it's going to take to print. And currently it's a 57-minute print, about an hour. 
let's take a look at this a little more. Everything here looks good. I don't see any gaps or weird lines or anything. Let's go to the slice view. So this is model view. Slice view is over here. It's going to let us see what's actually a print light. The first thing you see is what's called a skirt. This skirt allows it to serve the model to make sure it's clear and flowing good before it starts printing. And then I'm going to look at this. So you can see a bridge right here. That's okay. It's over. A, it connects two sections. So that's going to be fine. I can grab this slider and I can actually just look down through and see the infill of my object. This is kind of neat. We'll talk about this more as we get farther into this class, but it's kind of a neat view and it can be useful for trying to figure out how things are going to print. Now, the real question I have here for us is what settings I want to print at. And really, you want to just look at the box here. Three millimeter is 3, 0.3 millimeters per layer, which means it's going to be a lot fewer layers. In this case, it's going to be 30 layers, and it's going to take 57 minutes. If we go to 20 millimeters, and I don't see the difference in speed and quality, so I just do quality. We'll see the print time is going to jump up, and the number of layers now goes to 45. And the print time is an hour and a half. If I go down again to a lower layer at 0.15, the time is going to escalate again, and we're going to get even more layers. That means the curves are going to be smoother, but the print time is going to be longer. So I don't want to print anything longer than two hours, but the shorter it is, the more likely you get your item faster. So Let's set this to 30 millimeters draft. And we're going to double check to make sure there's a significant number of layers between the transitions. So I'm going to do is start slicing down. And before the bridge, we have like one, two, three, four, five, six. That's going to be good. And between the top of the bridge, one, two, three. So we have two full clear layers. That's going to be really good. I think it's going to move well. That seems like a solid print. So finally, I'm going to hit export G-code. And what I find best is usually put this in the downloads folder. So I'm going to make sure I just leave it in the downloads folder. I'm going to hit save. And now the last step is we're going to go to my website. If you go to my website and there's a little weird symbol here on Vivaldi browser, you're going to need to sign into your email. But right now, we're just going to sign into, which I'm signing in already. I'm going to click fill out form. That's going to open a new tab. And I'm going to have the form I need to fill out. Once it loads. Once it, okay. So first my name. I'm going to put Mr. Spooner. I'm printing. I'm going to say a dinosaur. I'm going to say key ring. I could even say flexi key ring because that's going to give me more information about what I'm looking for. And this is a single standard color print. So we're going to pick the first option. Now, this could be a lot of different colors. If I look on the wall, I can see what print ones are available. I think I want to do this one in um, shiny blue. So I'm going to say shiny blue. If I leave this blank, I could be any color. And that means I'm going to pick a color based on what type available. The downside of this is you could get like pink. And if you don't want pink, then you probably shouldn't lift it blank. So I'm going to hit next. Now I need to put my print time. If you remember back from Prusa, the print time was 57 minutes. So that's just under an hour. I'm going to pick the second option down. It's pretty easy. Now, the priority, a lot of people have trouble with this, but it really comes down to, is this something you're working on and you need this to see if it's right? Is this a final print, like for a grade? Or is this something I want just for fun or for a gift or whatnot? I'm going to pick soon final print for class. Next is other notes. In general, you shouldn't have to put anything here. But if you have something for a project and you want to take pictures of it or you want to see the print actually run or it's something weird like it needs to be a special filament then let me know like you need we want it with the flexible filament so there's different settings and you want to make sure it's right finally the last step is to upload the g code file I'm going to add file select files from your device and i have a couple options here i could pick dinoflex here or dinoflex here this was the model that we opened in brusa slicer this is the model this is the g code from Bruce Slicer. we want to grab the actual g code so I'll make sure that the extension is .gcode, not .stl. It usually has a longer name, too, because they add the different time and such. So I'm going to click on that, hit open. On our old slicer, sometimes we get files there as 0 uh, KB. We want to make sure this has a number here. It does. Everything looks good. I'm going to hit upload file. It's going to upload. And finally, I'm going to submit that print. And then at some point, I will go and actually print that for you. So that concludes this lesson.